Hey everybody, it's Jason with Parallel Reality coming back with you here today to go over a headline that I saw that I, kind of made me go, that cannot possibly be right. Well, turns out it's 100% accurate, so I'm going to go ahead and share my misery with you and hopefully we'll have a good laugh over this because this kind of shows how weak our society has become. So this is from the Daily Wire from May 4th. It says, University offers pro-LGBT students cotton candy and coloring for anxiety. Yes, because these university children, is I guess what we'll call them, um, even though they want to call them students, you know, these between probably mostly 18 and 22-year-olds need to be treated like third graders, you know, or less. So let's go ahead and see here. This is Portland. Of course it's in Portland. Portland State University is providing a safe space. Like, okay. So it says the university is offering its pro-LGBT students cotton candy, coloring pages, and temporary tattoos to soothe their anxiety. Seriously, like, is, is this for, like, uh, this is like, uh, what's it called? Uh, like when your town has one of their, like, little parades or festivals every year, you know, and it's like the little booth. Like, it's like a mini carnival sort of thing. Like... You know, oh, hey, let's go here and get some cotton candy. Let's get you a temporary tattoo. Like, are, are we, we're dealing with literal children here, like feeble-minded people. And what about other people who are not uh, LGBT? Do, do they not have some issues as well? Why do they not get to uh, imbibe of the same <laughs> uh, sort of things as the LGBT students? Anyway, let's go on and see how uh, how many brain cells we can lose by the end of this article. So, Portland State University will offer students the freebies to celebrate trans-identifying students amid mounting anti-trans bills in legislatures across the country, according to a memo from President Stephen Percy. Stephen Percy here is not a smart person because they're calling them anti-trans bills. They are not anti-trans bills. Okay, you should probably, Mr. President, is go look up those bills and see what they say. Okay, they're anti-genital mutilation, which any rational human being should be four so try that again and try to uh you know be honest about it next time says at least 10 states now have laws limiting gender surgeries for children this is exactly what i just mentioned says that most of these of those states also limit cross-sex hormones and puberty blockers for children so he wrote many loud voices have made no secret of their desire to target trans non-binary and gender diverse people percy wrote okay only one of those things is actually a real thing, which is the trans. Okay, there's no such thing as non-binary. There's no such thing as gender diverse. Okay, there's only two options. There is no third option. Okay, because when you're trans, you can only seem to move from one to the other, or you know, or vice versa. Doesn't ever seem to be a third option. How about that? There, it's solved. We're done. So. The article continues, says the university pledges to provide a safe space for all members of the LGBTQAI plus community, the memo said. So how many more uh, letters can we fit in there? Okay, could we just say LGBT? I mean, that basically, I think, probably covers everything. So, and he wrote uh, more. I'm sorry if I sound like I'm fading here already. It's because I really feel like somebody shot a hole in my head. <laughs> in Minecraft, YouTube. Uh, so article goes on, says we recognize the toll this campaign and the media that surrounds it has on the queer and trans members of our community, along with their family and friends. The university president wrote again, this is a campaign that you made up really. So there's an embedded tweet here from a Michael Weingrad. I do not know who that is. This is Portland state university president, Stephen Percy indicates there'll be no criticism of trans ideology allowed on campus. So they are an anti free speech campus it says instead cotton candy, temporary tattoos and coloring will be available and expanded trans days of resistance scheduled. Like what are those? Like <laughs> we need to, we need to let out our rage because people don't want their kids to be mutilated and are protecting them that way. I mean, if somebody was to word it that way, it may be like, okay. And if you were to tell me, Oh, there are people that are against that. I'd be like, well, you need to fling them into the sun at the earliest possible opportunity. Let's get the trebuchets ready and get on that. So article goes on, says the treats will be available at the school's queer resource center. So is the resource center itself queer? Or do queer people go there? Because it makes it sound like the actual building itself is of a somewhat different persuasion. I just I just find the wording weird of the school, not the article, the uh, the school. So it says the treats will be available at the school's queer resource center when it hosts a trans and gender expansive celebration and community hour every weekday from 12 to 1 p.m. for a week. Okay. Does so the queer resource center also host a trans social space called Tea Time? 
I see what you did there every Friday from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. But it's in case people are not looking at the actual article. It's just just the letter T, not T-E-A, like, you know, the English do. But I see what you did there. The university's efforts to comfort pro-LGBT students came just as Peter Bogosian, a former Portland State University philosophy professor, was visiting campus to discuss with students whether children can consent to puberty blockers. Go look this dude up. He's a legend, this guy, Peter Bogosian. I mean that in like the, uh, he's just a cool dude sort of sense. Like if you guys remember years ago, there was a story of some professors, or you didn't even know that they were professors, but you found out that like these professors were submitting research papers, like fake research papers to a bunch of woke journals to see if they could actually get them to pass with like one of them being, and I'm not even kidding about this, Mein Kampf, but the words, but some of the words were switched around so that it was more of a feminist screed as opposed to a certain a mustache German guy going on a screed against my people. Um, and like they get it, they got accepted at places. And then they came out later on that like <laughs> these guys did that. Like he was one of those three, James Lindsay uh, and the lady, uh, what was her name? Was it Helen Pluckrose? I think it was. Uh, but James Lindsay, definitely go look him up on Twitter. The dude is a staunch anti-communist. So he's right up my alley uh, and knows what he's talking about when it comes to the sort of woke culture. Uh, but they work together on a bunch of these things. And there was also, I think, another article, now that I think about it, about, like, why dog parks are racist, I think they wrote, or something like that. I mean, they were, they were honest to God, like, ridiculous articles that they were submitting. And again, these, I think they submitted 17 total papers or something, and, like, seven, somewhere, like, 7, 8, 9, 10, somewhere in that area actually got accepted, and I think a few were even published. So it, it's pretty ridiculous, the stuff that they did. But again, go look up Peter Bogosian, a very smart dude. So it says, back in 2021, Bogosian resigned from the university after teaching there for a decade, saying the school has made intellectual exploration impossible, which you can totally tell from the president's uh, comments that basically you can't criticize these people. Yes, because that makes things work. Every time you can't criticize a group of people, things always turn out great, don't they? So it says, when he resigned, Bogosian said Portland State University has transformed a bastion of free inquiry into a social justice factory whose only inputs were race, gender, and victimhood, and whose only outputs were grievance and division. Isn't, doesn't that like describe practically every college these days? It says, on Thursday, Bogosian tweeted that student activists attempted to disrupt his conversations with other students, adding that he is embarrassed for them, and as I would be too if I was in his position. He also tweeted a meme mocking the university, offering cotton candy, temporary tattoos, and coloring pages to students. So here's an embedded tweet from the professor himself, and this is him right here with the white hair on, hair on the right-hand side. The student activists at Portland State attempted to disrupt our, our public conversations today. I am genuinely embarrassed for the activists and disappointed that they prevented students with sincere objections from engaging us. Um, and then just another, like he was, it looks like retweeting, or quote tweeting, I guess that's what that's called. Sorry, I'm not up on my Twitter lingo, but uh, just quote tweeting, um, it was this garbage ghost person here. Uh, so... Article goes on, then he quoted, oh, this meme, funny cotton candy, <laughs> temper, yeah, this is a pretty funny meme. Anyway, goes on, says the school's queer resource center, remember the homosexual building, also sent out a memo warning about the provocateurs coming to campus and advising students to ignore and disengage. They're not provocateurs, they're just asking questions, that's not provocation. Learn what these words mean, people. So the intention of provocateurs is not to invite productive dialogue. No, for them, this is exactly what it is. You're just calling provocateurs because it's a, a word that means bad people to you. You're not using this word correct. And this is a thing leftists like to do is to show you that they don't, they, they know what these words mean, but they're intentionally using them incorrectly. Okay, so that they can, you know, make every everybody just look bad. It says their tactic is to provoke students, faculty, and staff, record it, and turn our community into clickbait material to be consumed by other folks with anti-trans dances. No, they're just trying to get get you guys to realize what you're doing. That's all it is. So they wrote, legally, we cannot stop them. No, so you're going to probably try in other ways because you're an extremely violent movement of people. Does the move memo encourage people to come to the Queer Resource Center to enjoy the treats and make crafts? The message also encouraged people to wear masks as an act of community care when not eating or drinking. Yes, because we still need to be wearing those stupid things. Jesus, talk about like a hive mind here. You can only do this. In one clip from Bogosian's visit, a man yells at him and tells him to go play in the freeway. Yes, again, these are violent people that just want you to go uh, Minecraft yourself. 
okay? They do not care if you are to be shuffled off of this mortal coil, as it were. Like, they do not care, and I can't stress that enough. So, it says, the world is better off without you pieces of shit out of it, uh, or with you pieces of shit out of it, the man says. It says, asked to give an argument in favor of gender surgeries for children. The man responds, no, shut the F up. I don't want to argue with you. Okay, so that's your rebuttal to him. Just asking you a legit question is you don't have an answer for it. That's because you probably haven't actually uh, thought about it, and you're just going with the line that your side does. Okay, there's you, you don't have it. You, you just have nothing to say about it. Your, when your response is, I don't want to argue with you, that to me says you don't know what you're talking about and or you have no argument for that, or for your side. Okay, so James Klug here, embedded tweets says, unhinged trans activist at Portland State completely loses it on Billboard Chris. Again, he's another guy you should go look up. Peter Bogosian and me says he doesn't want to explain why mutilating kids' genitals is okay. He just wants his way, okay? Yep, this is an authoritarian, okay? He's the kind of person that you should watch out for. This is not a... G- this... I assume that's who it is. This is not a good person. Watch out for that person. This last year, about 300,000 American teens, 13 to 17, identified as transgender, a sharp increase over the previous few years. From 2017 to 2021, gender dysphoria diagnoses in children nearly tripled, and over the same period, gender hormone treatments and surgeries have become trendy despite alarm from parents and medical professionals. Young people who previously identified as transgender have also spoken out about regretting getting medical intervention. And that's generally because if you look up the statistics, like, kids grow out of this. Like, essentially, once they hit puberty, like, I think it was, what was the number, 80% of children, like, the dysphoria that they're feeling go away. I mean, is that if that's what you're dealing with, if the number is in eighty like eighty percent, which is overwhelming, then you gotta go. Yeah, maybe that's just the way life is. Is that you hit that stage and you're just like, oh, I actually do feel like I am myself now because puberty does it for you. Okay. Um. So obviously, there's a lot of discussion here. There's a lot of. Uh, a lot of things to talk about in this whole discussion that this is not worth it for this article because this article is focusing on the extremely weak-minded Portland state that doesn't want to have any debate and is saying that, you know, we're going to coddle you at, at, like you're a four-year-old, you know, and give you cotton candy and let you color, you know, because you're not an adult. You're a child, okay, that can't handle differing opinions. Okay, it says a lot more about you, Portland state, than it does about the people coming there, Okay. But anyway, for the folks out there listening, what do you think about this? Uh, let me know your comments below. Say, if, if somebody is getting up in your stuff, do, do, do you want to have cotton candy and coloring to look back on so that you can feel all better with your fifis? Yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, share, subscribe, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.